All right, we can praise the steam and honor to the most high Yah, name of uh, Yahushua Hamashiach this day. Because it's John 5 39. On this blessed body, and let's go through what we got to go through to get to where we want to go. So, search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life, and there they was testifying me, and you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you. But you have not the love of Allah and anger. Do not, uh, I come in my Abba's name, and you receive me not. But another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. You honor one of another. If you doubt the honor that come from Allah, he only. Do not think that I will accuse you. The Abba, there's one that accused you, even Moses, to whom you trust. If I had you believed Moses, you wouldn't believe me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how should you believe my words? So, you know, praise be to Yah. In the name of Yahushua, you know what I mean? Just keep on troll, strolling down what we're strolling down. Let's get this Proverbs 10 and 12 off the shelf. Dust it off. You know what I mean? Put it on block and dispense it. Hatred stir up strife, but love covers all sins. So, we started looking at Babylon in regards to the beast carrying her. So you keep that in mind. That's in regards to the beast carrying her. This is what we're looking at and the things that pertain to that. To so get a good level of understanding uh, of the things that are contained in that, you know. So a lot of things that are said and spoken of are the word of the living Elohim on a day-to-day -day basis. I just heard a man say, you know, you can't take anybody seriously who, who deals with the scriptures and all these type of things, all these type of things that have come at you to test you to see if you really love and believe in you. So let's take a look at something in the law before I proceed, since I mentioned that, because I just want to use this as a reminder. The 13th chapter of Deuteronomy, first verse. Deuteronomy 13 and 1. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and give you a sign or wonder, and the sign or wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto you, saying, Let us go after other gods which you have not known, and let us serve them. See, you remember that in John chapter 17, Yahushua made the statement that Kadash Father of the world have not known you, but I have known you. See, it's very easy for you to go after other gods you haven't known when you don't know the true and living out of you. Most people do not actually know you. Let's take a let's pause and let's look at John 17 and the statement that he made. Let's look at that. John chapter 17, verse 23. John chapter 17. Verse 23. We can make it 21. He said that they all may be one as you, Abba, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me and the esteem which you gave me, I've given them that they may be one even as we are one. I and them and you and me, that they may be made perfect and one and that the world may know that you have sent me and I love them as you love me. I, I will that they also whom you have given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my esteem which you have given me, for you love me before the foundation of the world. That takes us back to the conversation we had about which is yet, which is, which was, and which is to come. Remember when it said about the beast, it said which, which is, yet is not, yet is, because he is not Elohim. Elohim is before. That's why he say Yahusha Hamashiach to say yesterday, today, and forever. That's why he's mentioning you. That's why he used that terminology in the epistle to the Hebrews. Because yesterday is the foundation of the world, which is which is the which was is today, or the manifestation of him in the flesh, dying and resurrecting from the dead, which is which is the which is to come, which is his, his returning. And that the beast is set up to be there and from the foundation that he is not Elohim. And you have to understand that and know that because if you don't know your Elohim, this man will deceive you without question. 
You know what I'm saying? That that's that's just going to be a a deleterious situation for you all the way around the board. Uh, verse 25. Oh, righteous Abel have not known you, but I have known you. And these have known that you have sent me. And I have declared unto them your name and will declare it, that the love where if you have loved me may be in them and I in them. Now, let's go to John 14 just because we there. He said, you know, the world haven't known you. Now, of course, we know what's contained in John 14. Uh, every brew likes to run to this particular passage, but they don't like to keep going. So John 14, 15, because we're talking about the manifestation of the Ruach HaKadosh. And that's what uh, you have to have that. Then the beast is of no threat to you. Why? Because Yahushua is about to tell you why. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray, Abba, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the Ruach of truth whom the world cannot receive because it see him not, neither know him, but you know him, for he dwell with you and shall be in you. If you remember, Yahushua quoting the prophet Isaiah made the statement that, you know, unless they had eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart to understand that they might be converted and I should heal them. This is why he say they don't they got they because they don't see the ruach. Well, you don't see the ruach because as Job said, I heard of you. Let's just look at Job for you. Let's just do that. Just rehashing some old information. Very well then. Job forty two and one. Job answered Yahuwah and said, I know that you can do everything. That's the same thing that the apostles said to uh to Yahusha. He said, We believe you now we, that you, you can do all things, and that no thought can be withholden from you. Who is he that high counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me, wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech you, and I will speak and I will demand of you. Declare you unto me. I've heard of you by the hearing ear, but now my I see you. See, the, and, and why is that relevant or why they can't see is because faith come by hearing and hearing come by the word. So individuals can't see Allahim to be able to know Allahim because they don't hear Allahim because they don't believe Allahim, which takes us back to Deuteronomy chapter six and verse every single solitary time, which is the greatest commandment of them all. And we'll just read that because the Lord said it. And I just feel like sharing. John chapter 12, verse Mark chapter 12, excuse me. Verse 27, verse 28, John 12 and 28. I mean, Mark 12 and 28, excuse me. Mark 12 and 28. And it says, and one of the scribes came, having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? Yahusha answered him, the first of all the commandments is here, O Yasharal, Yahuwah Elohim is one Yahuwah. You shall love Yahuwah, your Elohim, with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. And this is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There's none other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said unto him, well, master, have you said the truth? For there is one Elohim, and there's no other but he. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the soul and with all the strength and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Yahushua saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, you are not far from the kingdom of Elohim. And no man after that dirt asked any question. And what? And when you look at the sacrifice, that take you back to John chapter 7. John chapter 7, excuse me, Jeremiah chapter 7, where he said, I never told your forefathers about offerings and sacrifices. I said for them to obey my voice, to believe me. That's what he's concerned with. And I was telling the brother earlier this today, man, like when you strip the gospels down to the base of what Yahshua's whole ministry was about is pretty much was these, these statement right here. Everything he was talking about was to believe in Yahuwah and obey. At its basis, at its simplest, at its stripped away, at its bare nakedness, at its acoustic brilliance. That's pretty much what it was all about. 
Hawks. What it's always always been about. Deuteronomy chapter 13, yeah. Deuteronomy 13 and 3. You you shall not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for Yahuwah your Elohim prove you to know whether you love Yahuwah your Elohim with all your heart and with all your soul. You shall walk after Yahuwah your Elohim and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. And you shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken to turn you away from Yahuwah your Elohim which brought you out of the land of Mishraim and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust you out of the way which Yahuwah your Elohim commanded you to walk in, so shall you put the evil away from the midst of you. Well, of course, you already know this is what the beast coming to do. It's one of the reasons why he has to be put to death. But also Babylon is a part of that voice because he's helping to push and promote that. Let's take a look at Jeremiah chapter 50. Do I want to go to Isaiah? I don't need Isaiah 34. To be told, Isaiah 33 doesn't do me any good. Let's finish Isaiah the 23rd chapter. At least not right now. Where did we stop at in Isaiah 23? We'll pick it up at verse 4 and work our way around. He said, be you ashamed, O Zidon. This is Isaiah 23 and 4. Be you ashamed, O Zidon, for the sea has spoken, even the strength of the sea, saying, I travail not, nor bring forth children, neither do I nourish up young men or bring up virgins. Remember, we don't make great men or chaste women. At the report concerning Misraim, so shall they be sorely pained at the report of Tyre. Pass you over to Tarshish, how you inhabitants of the isle, is this your joyous city whose, whose antiquity is of ancient days? Her own feet shall carry her afar off to sojourn. Who have taken his counsel against Tyre, the crowning city, whose merchants are princes, whose traffickers are the honorable of the earth? We talked about that last week. Yahuwah of hosts have purposed, to, purposed it to stain the pride of all esteem and to bring contempt and to bring into contempt, excuse me, all the honorable of the earth. Just swing over here to Isaiah 24 real quick. Let's look at a little statements that Yahuwah had to make. And now this is his judgment against the whole earth. Not this one, because at the end of the day, when we're dealing with it, at the end, you're dealing with a judgment of a city and a judgment of all. Let's look what he says in the first verse of this 24th chapter. He said, behold, you who make the earth empty and make it waste, turn it upside down. Scatter abroad the inhabitants thereof. It shall be as with the people, so with the priest. As with the servant, so with his master. And as with the maid, so with her mistress. As with the buyer, so with the seller. As with the lender, so with the borrower. As so with the taker of Ushri, so with him that give Ushri to him. So let's look at the word lender in this particular passage and let's see what we find. Now, here when we see lender, we see the word again, lava, which is to borrow or to lend to, which is the word that you see also in, in, uh, in Proverbs 22 and 7. And it says, Ish lava, the man who you lend to, and all and the things that come along with that and all that there. But we'll leave that for, for the moment. So the land shall be utterly empty, the earth utterly spoiled. You who have spoken the, his, this word, the earth mourn and fade away, the world languish and fade away, the haughty people of the earth do languish. But the earth also is defiled and under the inhabitants thereof, because they transgressed the Torah and changed the ordinance and broken the everlasting covenant. So why did we come to look at this? Because we've started looking at this in the book of Daniel. He tells you how this man come to change times and laws. Because this man is trying to tell you to worship him and not Yahuwah. So when you look at him telling you how he's trying, he's trying to tell you it's not a sin to do certain things and how they've broken the everlasting covenant. Because remember, he's making intelligence or he's teaching people 
who have forsaken the covenant. You have to understand that this is what's going on in the earth. You who is being disrespected and disregarded at a level that had never been seen in the history of mankind. That's what you have to be able to understand. Verse six, therefore have the curse devoured the earth. They that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men left. So let's take a look at second Peter chapter three. About verse six. Make it verse three. Second Peter three and three. A song just came in my head, so I'm trying to recall which songs it is that I want. Before I even read the second Peter. Psalm 79. Come to Psalm 79. Psalm 79 and 1. Do I want to use some? Well, I move around. Oh, Elohim, the heathen are coming to your inheritance. Your Kadash temple have they defiled. They've laid Jerusalem on heat. The dead bodies of your servants have they given to be meat unto the fowls of Shamahim, the flesh of your saints, unto the beasts of the earth. Their blood have they shed like water round about Jerusalem, and there was none to bury them. Paul, shalom, man. Come to Revelation chapter 11. We holding Isaiah chapter 24. We ain't got to Jeremiah yet. Isaiah, I mean, Revelation chapter 11. It was giving me a reed like unto a rod, and the Malachim stood saying, Rise, measure the temple of Elohim and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court that which was without the temple leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the Kadash city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. Now remember, he said, Oh, Elohim, the heathen are coming to your inheritance in the Kadash temple. He defiled and left Jerusalem on heat. Would you say that that would be an accurate assessment of what we're reading right here, sir? That sounds like that's what we're reading here. Let's look at C more. Let's continue. I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth, which is three and a half years, people. It's three and a half years. These two, these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before. Alahim, the Alahim of their rats. And if any man will hurt them and fire proceed out of their mouth and devour and devour their enemies, if any man will hurt them, he and, and must in this manner be killed. Why would they must be killed? Because then he say his word is like a like a fire. You know what I'm talking about? That's what Jeremiah described it as. It was a fire raging in his bones. So it's only right. Alahim is a consuming fire. So it's only right. They have power to shut Shamahim that it rained not in the days of their prophecy and have power over the waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with plagues as often as they will. As we stated, these are the powers that, it was, that Moses and Elijah had. That is not to say that these two men are Moses and Elijah. It always tripped me out. I see dudes who are the two witnesses. Nigga, why does it matter? What are you going to do with that information? What are you going to do with it? He didn't tell you. If he didn't tell you who they were, how you know? You're just inferring and then you're arguing and falling out about nonsense. Things that are, you're spending time. Don't spend any. Remember what we just read in Job 42. He said, I, ex, I, I got myself involved in things too wonderful for me. That ain't got nothing to do with you, man. That's none of your business. You're going to know him when you see him. That's above your pay grade. See, everybody feel like you're supposed to know everything. Who told you that? I got to know the whole truth. Nigga, you don't know the truth. He left you. But you're trying to figure everything out. Can't you figure out how to re restrain your body from iniquity, your heart from malice and, and, and blasphemous pride and, uh, and idolatry. Can't control your loins. But you can tell me who the two witnesses is. Who's the dummy? Nevertheless, 
And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascend out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead body shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where our Lord was crucified. So then you have people like, see, that's over here. He just told you where your Lord was crucified. So you know this, Jerusalem, this is common sense. Yahushua wasn't crucified in Sodom. He wasn't crucified in Egypt. He's just sitting here telling you what's going on. See, the, the, now we clown about it, but let's just be honest. And we, and we can read it in one of the epistles. You can read it in Genesis. Sodomy was not the only thing going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. There was oppression. There was fornication. And then, yes, they were going after strange flesh. You got to understand something. You got to understand something. The beast supports the doctrines of Babylon. So that type of revelry would be going on in Jerusalem in honor of their Allahims. You have to understand that. That's one of the reasons why we looked at 2 Kings 17. And you can see that. Did we not read by how he said the people built they, uh, they, they brought the house in Jerusalem? Did we not read that? See, this would happen when you know the text, right? Then you would know. That wouldn't be past somebody to do it, now would it? Let's go back and look at that in 2 Kings 17 in case you forgot. I just don't want you to be nobody going to do nothing like that in Jerusalem. It's already been done. Don't think that it hasn't. There's nothing new under the sun. We have to set the stage with, with this Babylon thing for you to understand and see clearly that so, so you're not shocked. When you see a brothel in the middle of Jerusalem, you won't be shocked. They probably got them over there now. I'm willing to wait till them Israelis got some definite strip clubs. Shalom, brother. I know they got some strip clubs over there, man. The people sick in the head. They sick in the head. Well, anybody who walk after sin sick in the head. So it is what it is. I want you to look at verse 28 in 2 Kings 17. Look what it say. Then one of the priests whom they carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethal and taught them how they should fear Yahuwah. How be it every nation made gods of their own and put them in the houses of the high places which the Samaritans had made, every nation in their cities wherein they dwelt. And the men of Babylon made Sokoth ben Oth, and the men of Kuf made Nergal, and the men of Hamath made Ashima. So in the land of Alahim, because at this particular junction, they in the northern kingdom, Bethal was akin to Jerusalem, right? It was akin to it. You know what I'm saying? That's why he told him I had to destroy your house in Shiloh. He said, I'll do this house in Jerusalem like I did that one in Bethal, the house in Shiloh, because you didn't know how to act. You were evil. He said, because that's where you put your trust at. You put your trust in this house. So he said, let me show you how I feel about it. I'll tear it down. But look at what, remember that, right? It's a coat been off. That's the house of the harlots. That's a whorehouse. Now remember, Sodomy was not the only thing going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. Let's just sit back and look at it. Let's just not just be simple. Let's just look at it. Let's just, just be Genesis 18 and let's just be thorough as possible. Because we're not just going to make the assumption that everybody knows. Let's just be thorough as possible. Being thorough ain't never hurt nobody. Genesis 19, I should say. Matter of fact, make it Genesis 18. Let me see why I want to start at Genesis 18. We started at about verse 16. He said, the men rose up from thence and looked toward Sodom. Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. Yahuwah said, shall I hide from Abraham the thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham surely shall become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Now, you know what that take you back to? You know what they take you back to? They take you back to say that surely you who would do nothing, but he revealed his secrets to the prophets. Ain't that right? He let him know what he was going to do. He said, let me show Abraham what I'm going to do. About verse 20, right? Say, you who would say, well, I'll read 18, verse 19. For I know that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of Yahuwah to do justice and judgment, that Yahuwah may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken. Yahuwah said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see where, whether they've done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come unto me. 
And if not, I will know. So what does this take you back to? Let me show you something. Pause. Should I do it now? I think I'll do it now. Go on and set that stage for that now. Come to Jeremiah 50. Just bear with me, y'all. We got to work our way around. You know, we got a lot of information to hit. Jeremiah 50 and 51 are very, very long uh, chapters. It's Jeremiah 51. Pardon my mistake. We'll pick it up in verse one. I can knock out two birds with one stone. Everything not is necessarily going to be in chronological order. So we're holding Isaiah the 24th chapter. We're holding Revelation the 11th chapter. We're holding Genesis the 18th chapter. And we're presently in Jeremiah the 51st chapter and verse 1. It says, Thus saith you who will behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me a destroying wind. Now, pause. He says he'll do what? He said he'll rise up against Babylon. Who else, sir? Who else he said he'd rise up against? He says, he does say if you will behold, I will rise up, raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me. Now, what can you go read in the book of Revelation that shows you this? You can read in the 17th chapter of the book of Revelation that all the nations of the earth were gathered together to do what? To fight the lamb. So they're rising up against you. Who are what causes these people to even rise up against the Lamb to begin with? Oh, we're also holding Psalm 79. Also, pardon me. So what causes them to rise up? Something that we looked at last week. The blasphemy of the beast. Him slandering and disrespecting you. This is one of the reasons why the beast must be slain. This is one of the reasons why those who take the mark will be slain. Because you who have stated, if you blaspheme in Torah, you ought to die. Yahusha came back and manifested mercy of Elohim. You could blaspheme this and you could blaspheme that and you could be forgiven. You blasphemed in Ruach HaKadosh. I'm going to holler at you. What you think the beast was doing? You think that was regular blasphemy? He was blaspheming the Ruach. What you think he was doing? Oh, you out. You out of here. That's why everybody who, who take the mark with him, you out of here because you committed the sin that can never be forgiven. It's not. It's past them committing idolatry. It's the fact that they blaspheme the Ruach. But we'll deal with that at another time. This fourth is delving to that in greater detail. He said, I will send unto Babylon fanners. They shall fan her and shall empty her land. For the day of her trouble, they shall be against her round about. Against him that bend that let the arch, against him that bend let the archer bend his bow. Against him that lift up himself in the brigadine. That did not make any sense how that is worded. Spare you not her young men, destroy utterly all her hosts. Thus shall thus the thus the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans, and they that are thrust through in her streets. So remember, Yahushua coming back to slay with what? The sword of his mouth, right? Mm -hmm. So he's gonna be thrusting them through, leaving them dead in the street. Nevertheless, for Yasharal have not been forsaken, nor Yehuda of his Elohim, Yahuwah of hosts. Through their land was filled with sin against the Kadash one of Yasharal. Listen what he tell you. See if this sounds familiar to you. Flee out the midst of Babylon. Deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity. For this is the time of Yahuwah's vengeance. He will render unto her recompense. See, a lot of brothers read Revelation 18. That's not where that statement originates from. Now, you have to remember this statement if we're going to deal historically and what's in the script. When we left out of Babylon, was there any vengeance upon Babylon when they left out of Babylon? They were let out freely. You know, as a matter, matter of fact, go read the script for yourself. Go read the book of Ezra. Go read the book of Nehemiah. Babylon was not in control upon our departure out of Babylon. The Medes and Persians had already taken over. There was no giving of a decree from you leaving out of Babylon to flee out the midst of her because and not to be cut off in her iniquity. Because some of your ancestors stayed in Babylon and did not go back to Jerusalem. It's in the text. You can read it for yourself. So and remember, Jeremiah, because the 52nd chapter of Jeremiah will, will show you how he saw Zechariah taken to Babylon. 
You have to understand that. That's where Lamentations of Jeremiah come in at, was his weeping of them going into Babylon. So the statements that he's making is not referring to the kingdom of Babylon at the time that they were taken into it. This is at another time. You know, a lot of brothers use that, that particular passage to say that you ought to flee America or go move here or go live here. And that's not what this is referring to, because you will know when you're in the midst of Babylon and you need to get up out of there. A lot of brothers, America, Babylon, that's foolish to believe on a, num on, on, a, on a number of different factors. Number one, you know where Babylon is. That's overseas, quote unquote, as they like to say. But the, the doctrine, the cultural ideology of Babylon, the mystery school Babylon, why do you think you call it the great whore mystery Babylon? Because it's Babylonian mystery school. The same comedic mystery school. It's the same hidden truth of idolatry that has been going on since before the flood. It's nothing new. And that idolatry, that ideology, I should say, is being carried and perpetrated by the two beasts. You have to know, you have to put the whole puzzle together to get to see that, to understand that, and not being concerned of it being a geographical location. Don't let them dread down there in Jamaica, how you Babylon must burn, and you think it's America? Because America is nothing but a, a maglamation of other cultures. Do you know what I'm saying? It's just Babylon light. Verse 7. You know what? I'm going to keep going. We'll come back to verse 7 eventually. Y'all will it for the night is complete. Babylon has been the golden cup in Yahuwah's hand that has made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her? Take balm for her pain. If so, she may be his next statement. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go everyone into his own country. For her judgment reach unto heaven. It is lifted up even to the skies. The same thing that you see going on with Sodom and Gomorrah. The same, and the reason why we are looking at these two things is because these two cities were destroyed. Well, these three cities were destroyed in the same fashion. So the destruction was imminent before the fleeing. Well, I mean, the fleeing was before the imminent destruction of the place. Excuse me. So when you look at it and you understand that, you can't take that when you tell people they should come out of sin or come out of quote unquote, Western culture and say, come out of her, my people, that you don't be partakers of a plagues because that's not scripturally accurate. When he told him to come out of Sodom and Gomorrah is because once their iniquity reached up under heaven, he was soon to destroy it. So this is why he told them to depart. What you think the two witnesses is for? See, at the end of the day, before he destroys Babylon, see, he just, it, it's not that uh, people, see, people like to try to take the script and apply it to themselves in the time that they're in. You can't always do that because you will misapply it and then cause people to look for things that will not happen. And then when those things don't happen, it causes individuals to lose faith in Yahuwah because men, not skilled scribes, as Ezra has stated, We'll leave ministry. Y'all know what everybody looking for, right? It's 2019. What are they looking for in 2019? You know what they looking for in 2019? Mm -hmm. They looking to leave here. They say it's 400 years. Now, when people, when you don't leave, you people got to come up with something to make up to, to fill that gap. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to understand something, man. Black people are the easiest people on earth to manipulate. And they're easy to manipulate for two reasons. Number one, because you have no culture. Number two, because you're highly emotional. You're highly emotional. Anyone who is highly emotional is prone to manipulation because all I have to do is create scenarios to cause your emotion, to take your emotions and shift you in the direction that I want you to go. That's it. That's why black people are so easily manipulated because you're highly emotional. Do you know what I'm saying? You are emotionally stoked and moved by everything that you see. Men included, men first and foremost, 
Because when, because when we're talking about being highly emotional, I'm not referring just to the aspect of people automatically thinking like the emotions of a woman. That means you don't usually move by logic, reasoning, and, and, and facts, empirical data. You go by how you feel. This is why Yahoo Shah told you not to judge after the seeing of the, the hearing of the ears and the seeing of the eyes, but to judge righteous judgment. Because that's when you would be judging according to the Ruach and not your emotions. So when you go by your emotions, you're going to judge wrong every time because you're going by what you see and you're going by what you hear. But you're not going by righteous judgment by judging it according to the facts and how that line up with the word. And you're going to make a mistake every single solitary time without question. You can't do that. And guess what? Your enemies know that you're highly emotional. They know this. And when I say your enemies, I'm talking about agents of chaos who work for the adversary. Not your enemies as fourth as nationality, but your enemies who work as agents of chaos. See, see, most people who are emotional, see, people who move by logic and re reason are solution based because solutions is what destroys chaos. Most people who are emotional usually don't want solutions. So that is an invitation for chaos, which is just disorder. You know what I'm saying? So you want to keep a people emotional because it allows you to keep them in a disorderly state. Period. That's why television and movies and music and everything that you can consume caters to the human emotions because it keeps you in a continual state of disorder, of confusion. And we already know that Elohim is not the author of confusion. He's not the author of disorder. This is why they have the Heglegi uh, dialectic or the order out of chaos, or what, what is called problem, reaction, solution. Create a problem to get a reaction out of the people and give a solution to the problem of which you created, which is doing something to cater to the emotions of people. This is why the Apostle Paul wrote in Ephesians that those of her who are Ramashiachs have crucified the affections and the lusts. You've crucified it, you have killed it. Because your flesh will lead you in the wrong direction. And that's why I've been saying that for years. A lot of people don't like to hear it. You know what I'm saying? But you must keep your emotions at bay. It will allow you to be manipulated. And that's why I mentioned that as we sit back, the certain things that have occurred when I was mentioning to y'all a few months back about having perspective. We've just seen uh, that. They're planning on building a statue for Nipsey Hussle. What's the purpose of that? Because they used your energy of your emotions to get you welled up in idolatry. And now you will willingly and wantonly come down and bow down to a statue of a sinner. So if I can get you to do that with somebody who all he did was put words together in a sentence. What do you think I will get you to do with a man who professes himself to be God? You have to think bigger picture. You have to be a, a, a you have to see further down the road. You have to have a three dimensional mind. You have to have a four dimensional mind. You have to have a mind that it's not checkers, it's chess. And you have to see further down the road. The same thing we're talking about with R. Kelly. Everybody knew R. Kelly was sleeping with little girls and nobody cared until they made a documentary about it. And then you were outraged. They were playing with your emotions. These people laugh at us because they can see how easily they can push the needle and move you to manipulate your emotions. And we can no longer allow, if we say we're the people of Elohim, for people to do us in this fashion, because that means that the adversary will be able to work through the beast to do us in the same way, and we would bow down and worship him. And y'all forbid that we would ever be so foolish to do such a thing. Jeremiah 51, right? I finished that. Genesis 18. No hard things and hard saying. As my man is like to say, that's a hard saying, but it is what it is. It's going to be what it's going to be. Now, of course, y'all know in Genesis 18, he made a statement to Abraham. If you can find 50 righteous men there, I will surely not destroy that city. He found none. We also hold in second Peter chapter three. I'd be remiss if I didn't remind y'all of that. Uh, let me see what we can use. Hmm. And uh, because we know what's in Genesis 19, them boys was on a booty bandit mission, and that's just sad. And and he cracked jokes about it, whatever the case may be. But let's just be serious for a moment. That has to be one of the most disturbing and saddening things that you would ever want to witness. 
uh, for grown men, for grown men to go out looking for a man to have sex with. That, that's 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 that, that's a that's a sad state of affairs. Go to Deuteronomy thirty-two, man. Verse 30, 32, maybe by verse thirty. Deuteronomy thirty-two and thirty. And after that, uh, Ezekiel chapter sixteen, man, by verse forty-nine, just to get a little bit of insight and. Uh, to some of the things that were going on in Sodom and Gomorrah, outside of Sodom, that everybody is usually familiar with. We're also holding Psalm 79, 2 Peter chapter 3, Isaiah chapter 24. I think that's mine. I feel like I missed it. Deuteronomy 32 and 30. Get in the right place. It said, How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock hath sold them and you who has shut them up? For the rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. Pause. Now let's take a look at that and consider that. What did you think that means, sir? Their rock is not like our rock. Our enemies themselves, they judge. We're also holding Revelation chapter 11. What do you think that means? I think about how we said a song about him being on a rock and on a strong. And he's saying they they still not anymore. They still do whatever they like to do. What do you think? What do you think that means, Shayla? What y'all think that means on here? When he say their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. What y'all think that means? I don't know about it. That's the part I'm focusing on all the time. Now you gotta pay attention. I'm gonna slow it down. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all, y'all grasp it, it just probably sounds funny to you as you hear it and you read it. Now he's saying that their God is not like our God. They themselves are judges themselves, that their God is not like our God. So we have to be able to answer that question. You would have to be able to think, what is it that your enemies are doing that shows forth that their God is not like ours? Did that make it clear? Their lifestyle and the things that they do. So let me show you an example how. How is the beast going about to get worship? He's killing people, is he not? And he's using deceit. You ain't ever killed nobody to get him to worship him, did he? He just gave you the option. You ain't ever lied to nobody to get him to worship him. He gave you the truth. It was up to you what you were going to do. What you got to do, that's why another reason why we've been looking at this. What you had to do to serve Mole? You had to give him the babies. You ain't got to do that with you. You, you got to give up your child. You got to set him on fire. You ain't got to do none of that. What you got to do in, in, in the house of Ben Sakof? What you was in there doing? Oh, it's a coat, but no, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's the one with the women. That's the house of the girls. That's the, the, girl. yeah. that's the brothel house. What, what you who have said to Eli's sons? Y'all around here knocking them down and the same what y'all got going on. What he said to Jeremiah 7, you think you could come in this house and rob and steal? Commit adultery and all this here and think you delivered to do all of that? Shalom, man. You think you delivered to do all of that? No, we don't do that. So that's good to see. And that's where you sit back and look at it. The things that their gods require shows that they don't have the stability that we have with ours. You know what I'm saying? Because the beast rules through fear of death. Yahuwah rules through fear of you going to respect me because who I am. Yeah, I could kill you, but I ain't got to throw that over your head. And also, you know, the key thing, how the enemies themselves being judges, it says, you know, there's forgiveness with you who that you might fear. You know what I'm talking about? Ain't no forgiveness and mercy with these other deities. It ain't there. It ain't present. You understand? So that's how you show it. They God's not like our God. Then we can get into the other stuff. These niggas, punks, vampires. You know what I'm saying? All this whole other type of stuff that they got going on. 
but everybody got a problem with your whore. Y'all crazy for following. Well, if I'm crazy, what you messing with me? Doing in the community, that means you're not doing that from your heart. You're doing that because you 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 got some low self esteem. You got some issues. Your parents didn't validate you. Nobody told you you were special. Nobody made you feel appreciated. What's your problem? Because if that's what you felt, you'd be doing that from the heart because that's for the love of your people. You wouldn't have to constantly remind somebody what it is you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Who does that? It's people out here who do stuff with people every day and don't talk about it. For what? What's the point? What's the point? If that's what you do, do what it is what you do. I don't need to know about it because I don't care. It ain't, got, it ain't got nothing to do with me. When I say I don't care because that's between you, your Elohim, or whoever you did it for. They ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm, I'm thoroughly unconcerned with it. I'm not going to look at you and be like, oh, that's a real great brother. I'm not. I'm going to be indifferent. Because I'm going to be like, what you told me for? That was, I didn't need to know that information. I felt like that before the word. I didn't need to know that information. That is not going to affect how I view you in any shape, form, or fashion. Because you know what Yahoo Shah told you. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand doing. But you niggas need to be validated, which means you're emotional. Because you haven't learned to validate yourself. You're not happy with yourself. You need to learn to be happy with yourself. Then people can't manipulate you. Then you wouldn't be you wouldn't be swayed by what the world is doing and what other people think or say, because your validation would come from your God first and then from yourself. That's what our people need. You can't say you're kings and queens, which I already know you ain't a king or queen because you got to tell somebody you are. If you have to tell somebody you are, then you know you're not because it was showing how you conduct yourself. You know what I'm saying? Because kings and queens royalty, if you will, is self validated. They don't need validation from anyone else. So if your Elohim say you were kings, a kingdom of, of kings and priests, then your validation come from him. This is why he said you cannot believe that receive honor one from another and not the honor that come from Elohim only. Let your validation come from him. You will always be at the whims of man if you seek validation from man. You will always be at the whims of man. Man can whip you and move you in whatever direction he want to move you in once he knows that your whole life depends on their validation. That's why Yahushua told you you can't believe when you do that. There's no way you're going to be able to believe in Yahuwah and do that at the same time. It's virtually impossible. Verse 31, he said, their vine is of the vine of Sodom and the fields of Gomorrah and their grapes are grapes of gall and their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of serpents and the cruel venom of ass. I mean, you extra wicked. That's extra wicked. And he's telling you that fruit is wicked. That's why he say a good tree can't bring forth corrupt fruit. And a corrupt tree can't bring forth good fruit. And you're supposed to have been a good tree, but you were bringing forth bitter clusters of grapes and grapes of gall through your behavior. And you got to remember, when he spits this song, you're not even out of the wilderness yet. So he's telling you how you're going to behave. Let's look at Ezekiel chapter 16. Sixteen and forty-six. I read forty-five. Thou art your mother's daughter that loathes her husband oh, no, and her children. You are the sister of your sisters who loathe their husbands and their children. And your mother was a Hittite and your father an Amorite. Now, see, we didn't deal with that when we were talking about masculine women. But that's a strong statement where he sit back and he said, you hate your husband and you hate your children. And he was talking about you. House of Yasharal, that's what he was talking about. Yasharal and Yehuda. That's what we were talking about. But Yasharal, more specifically, your elder sister is Samaria. She and her daughters that dwell at your left hand and your younger sister that dwell at the right hand is Sodom and her daughters. Yet you have not walked after their ways nor done after their abominations. But as if it were a very little thing, you were corrupted more than you than they and all your ways. As I live, say if you who are Elohim, Sodom, your sister have not done. She nor her daughters that you have done, you and your daughters. Behold, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. Pride, fullness of bread, abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. 
and they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore, I took them away as I saw good. And that's the thing you also see in Sodom. And, and, and he's describing Yasharal, Yehuda specifically, as Sodom. And that's what Sodom had going. Remember what it said in Isaiah 3? You're at Sodom. You, 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 you declare your sin. You don't hide it. They tell you that in another place, they say, Yahuwah have forsaken them. So you open with what you got going on. That's what you see in Sodom and Gomorrah. That's what you see in Babylon. They open with it. They don't care. And I'm going to tell you something. Don't think that, see, because you live in America, you don't think it ain't like that. They just as wicked, if not more wicked, because the things you following, they made it up. Ain't that's, what they, ain't that's where all this idolatry come from from over there? So you think you're going to beat the creator being wicked? When I say the creator, not you, I'm talking about the creators of idolatry. You think you're going to beat them at it? You ain't going to outmaster the master at wickedness. Everybody think them mother, them Arabs over there are so pious. Them niggas is desperately wicked. Don't let that young fool you what they show you on TV, man. Them niggas just this nasty. Fornicate, beat their wives, worship idols, lie, steal. They do all of that. But they control their own media, so they're going to let you see what they want you to see. See, that's the difference, black people. You don't control media. So they will present to you whatever they want to present you. They will present you how they want to present you. You think an Arab won't get on TV and put himself out there in a bad light? You think Chinese people and Japanese people and Korean people going to create television shows that put them in a bad light? Because you know the white folks over here don't do it. They don't make TV shows to put them in a bad light because I control it. You don't control nothing. And you always crying. We don't have any positive role models on television. You sound like a sucker because you're waiting for somebody to validate you. Hug me, Mr. White Man, and make a TV show for me that makes me feel good. And you won't respect. If somebody came at you like that in real life, you wouldn't respect them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you ain't you shocked because these people don't respect you. Because you asking them, you ain't you gave us the Cosby show and you took it away. You're destroying all of our heroes. You sound like a buster. They laugh at you. Because they know that you need their validation. You live and die for it. It's no different when I tell you for about we're going to prove to these nations we Israel. You a buster because you want their validation. You don't believe it. You're not validated because you who is because you who is manifested through you that that's who you is. And you ain't validated enough by that. You need the white man and the Arabs and the Asian. You need all them to validate it. That's weakness. And that's not a ruling class mentality. It's definitely not. And once they're a ruling class mentality, they have the mind of Yahoo Shah's to have the mind of a ruler. You don't have to be ruling over anything, but that's just the mind of a ruler. It's a different type of mind. Alahim is the Alahim of the whole earth. Shamahim is Shamahim. Nothing can contain him. He's the creator of all things. That's the mind of a ruler. We've been talking about this before. Yahuwah don't seek no one's validation. You don't have to believe I'm the living Alahim, but you will in due time when I show you. I don't need you to validate me. Yahoo shot didn't walk around screaming, believe in me. Y'all got to believe in me. He said, guess what, man? Dust your feet off on them and go on about your business. He said, what? They blind leaders of the blind? Leave them alone. Don't need your validation. You got to have the same type of mind. Validate me for what? Yahuwah by Yahoo Shah has already done so. I give thanks and honor and esteem to him through the name of his son. I don't need your validation. You would be amazed how, how much easier your life will be and how much less stress and anxiety you will have when you allow your Alahim to validate you first. The things that go around you around you will have no effect on you because you know where your strength is. Let's see, our rock is not like theirs. Put your you're supposed to be built on a rock, ain't nothing supposed to move you. Nevertheless, we good with that. Come back to second, uh, what I was, second Peter chapter three, man. Let me finish the second Peter chapter three so we can get to Psalm 79 and finish Revelation 11. At the end of the day, man, that's all you need is Alahim. You don't need nothing else outside of that. And when I say nothing else outside of that, I ain't talking about just Alahim in itself, even those who are the people of Alahim. You know what I'm saying? Who it causes to come in your pathway. 
That's all you need. Because if you are Alahim, you of Alahim. Second Peter chapter three, man. Verse three. Knowing this verse that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, where's the promise of his coming? But since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were beginning from creation. For this they are willingly ignorant that by the word Alahim, Shamahim were of old and the earth staying out of water and in the water, whereby the world that was being overflowed with water perished. The Shamahim and the rats, which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of one thing that one day is with Yahuwah a thousand days and a thousand, I mean, a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. Yahuwah is not slack concerning his promises. Some men count slackness, but it's long suffering to his war that not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. For the day of Yahuwah will come as a thief in the night and which Shamahim shall pass away with a great noise and the elements melt with a fervent heat and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. See, a lot of people, see, come on by the Psalm 79. See, a lot of people be running there. See, you who don't want you to die. Dang. Well, these niggas is going hard. We're killing people in this city. Back to Psalm 79. Actually, I did not come on Psalm 79 because of that. We came over there because of Revelation 11. We're back to Revelation 11. That's my fault. Psalm 79. We read in verse 8 again. Yeah, that's why we did that. My apologies. So it says, that, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Misraim where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Now let's go back to Psalm 79 and 2 and let's see what that's saying. Psalm 79 and 2 says, the dead bodies of your servants have they given to be meat unto the fowls of heaven, the flesh of thy saints unto the beasts of the earth, their blood have they shed like water round about Jerusalem, and there was none to bury them. Does it sound like there was nobody to bury these men? Huh? You know what I'm talking about? No, I'm talking about these two men. They said they didn't suffer nobody to bury them for three and a half days. Wouldn't let nobody get near their body to bury them. Same thing you see right here. That's in Psalm 79. Same exact thing. That's not in there by accident. Read Revelation 11 and verse 10 again. And I'm going to show you how it's lined up because they're talking about the two witnesses in Psalm 79. It, whether you believe it or not, it's there. It says that they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And after three days and a half, the Ruach of life from Elohim entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them, which saw them. And they heard a great voice from Shamahim saying unto them, come up hither. And they ascended up into heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them. They seen them go up into heaven, same way they see the Lord go then. Now, let's go back to Psalm 79. Look what it said, right? Because we didn't already seen how it says that their blood was shed around Jerusalem. It wasn't nobody to bear now look at verse 4. Listen to what he say, right? We are become a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn and derision to them that are round about us. And that's what they just were doing. Ridicule. They were happy. And y'all thinking people love Yahuwah and you think everybody want to hear the word. Don't be simple. These people was out there giving gifts to each other because these two men were prophesying and they wanted to attack them for prophesying. So these men had no choice but to torment the earth. You think they were tormenting these people to torment them? They were tormenting these men because they didn't hear, want to hear what they had to say. You think they were standing out here talking about the, the so-called Negro is the children of Israel? You think that's what they were standing out there talking about? You think these people would want to stop them from talking because they said that? You think the world really cares? Are you that deluded, proud, and arrogant to think the world really cares that much? But, oh, if you go to talking about Yahuwah is the living Elohim and Yahushua is his anointed one. 
and that the world has not known them, neither have seen them, and that they are doing things that are wicked and, 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 and disgustingly wicked in his eyesight, and that all men ought to repent and come to Halloween, then guess what? That's going to be a problem. Why do you think the beast coming out the bottom of this pit come up to kill him? Because he's trying to tell people that's him. Y'all in the way. He, he feel like, uh, what's what we used to say, man? He feel like they short stopping. That's what we used to say when we were hustling, man. Somebody post up in front of your spot. They say he out there short stopping. Well, the beast feel like these two witnesses are short stopping. You know what I'm saying? You're stopping me from getting me, me, man. And they ain't with it. Psalm 79, verse 5. How long you will, will you be angry forever? And the reason why we're using hatred, stir up strife as the backdrop, because it's the hatred that the world has for Yahuwah, which is stirring up strife. That's why we're using that verse as the backdrop. The hatred of Elohim stirs up strife. That's why they stirred up strife to kill Yahusha. And this is why he said, he said, now nah, I'm telling you ahead of time, they're going to kick you out of the synagogue now and they're going to kill you and thinking they do Elohim service. Now, I've told you this so you might not be offended. And all Hebrews talking about we need to come together. All he having you going to come together for because those that belong to him, you niggas going to kill them and put them out of the synagogue. You going to do it. Y'all words not coming back void. It's going to accomplish the thing where he son it to son it to do. And it's going to bring forth his delight. You better know and understand that. Y'all better get your head out of the clouds and get into y'all word and see what he said and what it's going to be. Because it's all dream of thinking that before Yahoo shot stand on the Mount of Olives, that we're going to be holding hands, singing Kumbaya, walking in Torah. You's a fool if you think that was going to happen. That man did not say that what was going to happen. He did not say that what was going to happen. He said that you would be hated by all nations, which is plural. That means Yasharal included. Because he already told you you'll be betrayed by kinfolk, mother, father, brother, sister. He already told you this. But you think every brew you sit down and feast with and every brew you sit down and fellowship with and every brew you see on Facebook and Instagram, love Yahuwah. Okay. Believe in Yahuwah. Okay. You keep thinking that. You've already been warned and told. That does not mean that you deal with your people in an adversarial and disrespectful manner. You know what I'm saying? That does not mean that. It's just that you are aware. See, I've been and where I've been saying that for years. I already know what that is. That's you who will want everybody to unify so he can go ahead and have his servants be killed and persecuted as he is intended. You know what I'm saying? That's his intention. That's his intention. You got a contingent of the people in the earth. They don't care about preaching Yahushua and that honor be brought to the Father's name, that the gospel of the Son of Elohim is declared. And when that's all your focus is, watch how people don't like you. But you like we, that's a, the that's a whole key thing. See, a lot of brothers who argue about stuff right now say they ain't got no pressure with each other because they argue about who Esau is. They've been arguing about who Esau is since I've been in the game. Ten years, nigga, they ain't gonna lie. Arguing about a 12 tribe chart. You don't see it as often. Thank, thank y'all for that. You don't see those two things, those two arguments as often as say that I once seen four or five years ago. Sheesh, four or five years ago. Good Lord Almighty. Uh, arguing about can women wear pants and uh, arguing about is America Babylon? All the things that dudes be arguing about. You know, I have a lot of bruises on my page, so. Well, I got more real estate people on my page now. So the brew that was on there, if they get in a lot of arguments, I don't see. I'm not in them groups anymore. I take myself out of all this stuff. I don't want to see that crap. It does nothing for me. I'm not, I'm not, I, I have no interest or desire to engage in uh capricious and whimsical and idiotic conversations and dispensations of uh intellectual penis uh sizing contests. So I'm good on that. So, you know, arguing about can you have more than one wife, all these things, those things are not separating anybody. That's just niggas in their feelings because somebody don't want to agree with them. But when you go to talking about righteousness and kadashness and the faith of Elohim, you will be persecuted. Yahushua has already told you this. If they hated me, they will hate you also. If they receive my word, then they will receive yours also. This has already been told to you. Do not delude yourself into seeing some because that is being emotional 
Don't delude yourself and, 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 and romanticize a scenario that you want to see. Look at what Yahuwah said is going to be and watch it unfold. Because he's already said what it's going to be. Yahusha has told you what it's going to be. They're going to persecute you for his name's sake, not for your nationality. And I challenge anybody anywhere to pull out the text that that's what they're going to come after you for. Because that's not what the book said. It's not what it says. It's not what Yah says. He didn't tell you that. Yeah, do some of you nations hate you? Yeah, they hate you. But remember what he told you. He that despises it don't despise man, but Elohim. They ain't never had no problem with you, man. They always had a problem with you who were from the jump. So they always had a problem. You ain't that nice for somebody to have a problem with you. You don't follow your own father. So what they have a problem with you for? If we were such a great and upstanding people, we wouldn't be in this country. You'd be in your own land. But guess what you did when you was in your own land? You was the male temple prostitute in Sukkot Banoff. You was in there. You were sacrificing your children to Molech. You was lined up at your neighbor's house, neighing like a horse, like Jeremiah said. That was you. You were full of pride and abundance of idleness. Oppressing the poor and needy. That was you. But you don't want to have that conversation because you want to play the victim, which is emotional. You got if you got a ruling class mentality, then you have to take responsibility for your actions and take accountability for what your actions brought you and stop playing the victim because you can't play the victim to a circumstance and situation that you created. The white man didn't create it for you. The Arab man didn't create it for you. Will they pay for their transgressions? Absolutely. He said, I will avenge you speedily. Nevertheless, will the son of man find faith when he come on the earth? You both already know that. See, that's why I'm comfortable. That's why I rest comfortable. Because my God already told me he's going to avenge me speedily. So I ain't worried about them people. It sure is, but it is the truth. I ain't worried about them worrying about an enemy before he told me. I'm. Mean, that's a light thing for him to crash and dash a nigga. Worrying about them niggas before, man. I put myself in this situation and circumstance. That's no different when dudes say, God got you in prison. No, he didn't. I put myself here. Put that on that man's shoulders. That's my fault. I ain't no victim. I got myself these five years. I got to deal with it. You know what I'm saying? You make bad decisions. You got to deal with the consequences of those bad decisions and learn from them. And stop being a dummy and making the same mistakes over and over again. You're just wasting your life. Because you're not learning because you're stubborn and you're proud. Stop being an idiot. You're smarter than that. You're better than that. But you know what our problem is? Ain't nobody never told us we were smarter and better than that and capable of making wiser decisions and capable of being a better person. So you continue to walk in a, in a pathway of foolishness. You know what I'm saying? But we no longer have to do that. We don't have to do that any longer because you know better, because you have better, because you have Yahweh Shah HaMashiach. So there's no need for you to do to continue in such a vein. You don't have to do that anymore. You know what I'm saying? But the number one thing, we have to stop being emotional and stop playing the victim. Got to stop playing the victim. Are, 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 are there deleterious, nefarious forces against us in the United States of America? Absolutely. Absolutely. Without question. Undeniable. But you say you serve the living Elohim. So what does those forces mean to you? What do they mean to you? How do they affect you? They don't. You're giving power over to something that don't have power, which is the same as a person who worship as an idol. So stop doing it. Let me finish this Psalm 79, man, so we can get a little bit of Jeremiah 50. I promised it. You know what I mean? We still got Isaiah 24. Though. Verse 6, right? Remember verse 5? How long, Yahuwah, will you be angry forever? Shall your jealousy burn like a fire? Pour out your wrath upon the heathen that have not known you and upon the kingdoms that have not called your name. Drop down to verse 10. Well, I, I might as well keep going. For they devoured Jacob and laid waste his dwelling place. Oh, remember not against us, former iniquities. Let your tender mercies, mercy speedily prevent us, for we are brought very low. Help us, O Elohim, of our salvation for the esteem of your name. Deliver us and purge away our sins for your name's sake. 
Huh? Y'all already know that's Yahushua. That's what he did. He said, uh, you know, uh, wherefore should the heathen say, where is the Elohim? Let it be known among the heathen in our sight by the revenging of the blood of your servants, which is shed. And that's why we read that because of what we see in Isaiah 24. Come back to Isaiah 24. He said, don't let them run their mouth. He said, how about you come back and get some vengeance for us? See, this is what I be meaning about people don't believe the word. There's plenty of places this man does. I ain't got to run around to me. He going to kill you, Crocker. So we going to kill every sinner on this earth. He say, ain't no sinners going to dwell in the land. Instead of worrying about the nationality, you better be worrying about if they sin it or not. I used to tell brothers all the time in the streets, you worry about what he going to do to the white man. I'm like, nigga, if you a sinner, you going with him. Now let that be known. Because whoever commits sin is of the devil. So there's a lot of devils out here. There's a lot of people that say, that's why y'all say you are your father, the devil. The lust of your father, ye will do. Better check your heart. A lot of people, you they said that's why he said nah, their enemies being judges. Their rock ain't like our rock. Oh man. Because you do the desire of your father. You do the things he like. You judge. People don't even realize that. You judging me. Shoot, you judge yourself. How I judge myself? Because your actions show right or wrong. That's why I say those who are full, strong, uh, uh, of age eat strong meat because they can discern between good and evil. So all I got to know. Uh, as a matter of fact, little homie said that earlier, man. I be telling that all the time, man. And, and we knew that as a jit, but Pimp C put it there. You ain't got to expose nobody because they expose themselves every day. It going to show. If he wants to put this only so long, fake thugs can pretend. You can only pretend to be righteous for so long. It's going to be chinks and cracks in your armor. It's going to show. Because eventually a person playing a role going to forget the lines in the script and they're going to have to say take two. Isaiah chapter 24. Man. We drop down to verse 8. See, that's why we went to and we and we sprung out from verse 6 of Isaiah 24 about the earth being burned. So that's why we went through the second Peter talking about Sodom and Gomorrah because we know that Babylon will be burned because he's going to do to Babylon what he did to Sodom and Gomorrah. That's why he say, no man do it. Does anybody dwell in Sodom and Gomorrah? Absolutely not. And they found the, the sulfur and the brimstone, you know what I'm talking about, in the place where it was at. But everybody worried about America. America's not that important, man. It's really not. This ain't nothing but the extension of the British Empire. If you're not familiar, go research the Virginia contract and things of that nature. That's all it is. It's just a corporation, just a satellite corporation for the corporation of Great Britain. That's all it is. Not that serious. You know what I'm saying? We talked about this the other day. It's just the manipulation of a small amount of people, a.k.a. Anglo-Saxons, to be able to maintain their power because they're the smallest people upon the earth. So this is why they do the th certain things that they do to maintain their power. But Yahuwah has all these countries lockstep in agreeing with them to fulfill his greater purpose later on down the line. You, do you not remember that the book says that all these kings of the earth will abdicate their kingdoms to the beast for one hour? Have you forgotten? Everybody talking about Trump, the Antichrist. You are a certain, if you think Trump is an anti, Trump is an anti-Mashiach because he don't believe in Mashiach. But when you have the man of sin, the son of perdition, if you think Donald Trump is that man, I got some I got some beachfront property to sell you in the middle of Phoenix, Arizona, because you got to be a, a, a pure. You have to be extremely spiritually inept to make that statement. What you're doing is you're regurgitating. You're not taking the time to see what Yahuwah has warned you and prepared you for. Donald Trump is not a factor in the plan of Yahuwah. Barack Obama is not a factor. In the plan of Yahuwah. The United States of America is a bit player. She's a bit player. She doesn't have a starring role. She's in a supporting role. She will not win lead actress at the SAG Awards. She's not getting the Golden Globe. She's not getting, and I forgot which deity that, that the Oscar is. I forgot who he is. Nigga walk around and the Oscar. You notice that nigga, that's a butt naked man. It, and it is. That's what I forgot. Yeah, that's what I'm sorry. And it's a butt naked man. You know what I'm talking about? 
Same thing with that dude, John Paul Gaultier with his with his cologne. You know what I'm saying? But naked man is the bottle. Kind of junk is that, man. And that's some good smelling cologne, too, man. They ain't bottle about They say, man, you got a bottle, nigga, whole penis out on, on, on your countertop. And you spraying. You know what I'm talking about? You got to take the cologne, put it in another spray. You know what I'm talking about? You got a nigga like this here in all his esteem. Come on, man. Ain't nobody got time for that. What was that, man? I need to finish. Uh, I got it. Let's go to Jeremiah 50. I just gave you something out of Jeremiah 51 a little early. Just to show you the concept that these things have already been spoken. You know what I'm saying? I used to tell brothers that all the time. I would say a good 85, 90% off the top of my head of the book of Revelation, you already been told. It's not new information. This already came out the mouth of the prophets. It's just another witness and more detail. That's it. Another witness and more detail. Jeremiah 50. Matter of fact, see Paul. Come to Jeremiah 50 since we already started that, that, that conversation. Let's pick this up at Jeremiah 50 and 33. Matter of fact, I'll work my way around. Because where we at right now, Jeremiah 50? I started at, we stopped at about verse 11 on, on Wednesday. Y'all willing? I think it was, well, Jeremiah 50 and 11. We'll go from there. He said, because you were glad, because you rejoiced, O destroyers of my heritage, because you've grown fat as the heifer at grass and bellows at bulls. Now, we already read this Wednesday in Revelation 17, how Babylon has gotten all the kings of the earth rich. And if I get you rich, what's that what that's going to make me? It's going to make me rich, too. This is why he's saying you were glad you destroyers of my heritage because you done grown fat. This is why this is why in Isaiah 47, she said, I sit as a queen. I won't see no sorrow. Whore. That's what she is. She's a whore. Y'all remember what BBD told you? You can't trust no girl, no big. You can't trust no whore. Don't never trust no whore in your life. I don't care if it's your own mammy. A whore is not to be trusted. Why is a whore not to be trusted? Because she is selfish. You know what I'm saying? So everything that she seeks to do is going to be for the benefit of her. At the peril of others. That's why you never trust a whore. You know what I'm saying? Period. Ain't got nothing to do with her giving her vagina away. Because Jezebel was a whore. And we don't have any evidence that she cheated on Ahab. She was a whore. And she was dangerous to everyone she came across. Because everything was about her and the fulfilling of her desires. Verse 12. Your mother shall be sure confounded she that bear you shall be ashamed. Behold, the hindermost of the nations shall be as a wilderness, a dry land, and a desert. Because the wrath of Yahuwah, it shall not be inhabited, it shall be wholly desolate. Everyone that go by Babylon shall be astonished and hissed at our plagues. We read that also on Wednesday in Revelation 18 when they was out there crying. Put yourselves in array against Babylon round about, all you that bend the bow, shoot at her. Spare no arrows, for she has sinned against Yahuwah. We talked about that on Wednesday as well, which was dealing with well last week. The blasphemy. So Babylon's issue. Now, he going to mention what they doing to us, but did he say they sinned against Israel or did they sin against Yahuwah? He said they sinned against Yahuwah. So he got a problem with why you think we also read that about Serena trap, right? King of Assyria running him out, right? Blaspheming. Telling you not to trust in Yahuwah. What you think the beast in Babylon going to be out here doing? He's saying you, so you know he's going to tell you not to trust in it. Shout against her round about. She's given her hand. Her foundation are fallen. Her walls are thrown down. For it is the vengeance of Yahuwah. Take vengeance upon her as she have done, do unto her. Same thing that's in Revelation 18. Render unto her double. Nevertheless, cut off the sword from Babylon and him that handle the sickle in the time of harvest. For the fear of their oppressing swore shall they turn everyone to his people and they shall flee everyone to his own land. You, so you think that's now? He said when Babylon get crashed, everybody going home. They going back home. That's why they say America, they got all the people in it. 
Have you forgotten that he's saying the valley, the valley of decision, valley of decision, the valley of Jehoshaphat, he will gather all the nations to what? To battle. So that means everybody going to be over there too. Pay attention to the word. That's Joel chapter three, if you, if you didn't know. Or what I just mentioned. Yasharal is a scattered sheep. The lions have driven him away. First, the king of Assyria have devoured him. And last, this Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, have broken his bones. Therefore, thus saith Yahuwah of hosts, the Elohim of Yasharal, <coughs> behold, I will punish the king of Babylon and his land as I punish the king of Assyria. Huh? So now he's giving you both captivities, which if we would have went in deep in depth in, in Ezekiel 16, you would have seen that as well, because he's discussing those two things. When he was talking about your, your, your sister Sodom and Gomorrah and all that, they were discussing that. So he said he got to do the king of Assyria, what he do to Nebuchadnezzar, what he did to the king of Assyria. You don't read too much. And the king of Assyria surrendered a trap, running his mouth. He had to come see him. He killed him. Put a new man in the steed. And guess who set Serena Tribe up in the first place? Yahuwah. And guess who he sent to anoint him, if I'm not mistaken? Jehu. That's who he sent. He said, go anoint him king. See, Yahuwah set these men up for his cause and his purpose, that esteem and honor might be brought to his name. Don't never forget that. You think this stuff got something to do with you? This is all you who was planning and will. His name will be honored and esteemed one way or another. You can do it willingly or you can do it by bending the knee with a sword to your throat. But one way or another, you're going to do it. He said, I will bring Yasharal again to his habitation. He shall feed on Carmel and Bashan and his soul shall be satisfied upon Mount Ephraim and Gilead. In those days and in that time, saith Yahuwah, the iniquity of Yasharal shall be sought for, and there shall be none, and the sins of Yehuda they shall not be found, for I will pardon whom I reserve. Now ask yourself this question. Has that occurred? Let's look at Son in Zephaniah chapter 3. Let's just look at Son, he said. Son we talked about not too long ago, too. Let's look what he said it would be when you come in. And, so when you leave about a Babylon, you leave about a Babylon, everybody ain't no sin. And all your sins been washed away. That didn't happen when you came out of Babylon and rebuilt the city under the command of Nehemiah. Zephaniah chapter 3. Zephaniah 3 and 12. And I will also leave in the midst of you an afflicted and poor people. Make it verse 11. And that day shall you not be ashamed for all your doings when you have transgressed against me. For then I will take away out of the midst of, the, of you them that rejoice in your pride. And you shall not be no more because of Makadash Mountain. I will also leave in the midst of you an afflicted and poor people and they shall trust in the name of Yahuwah. The remnant of Yasharal shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies. Neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. They shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. So listen, right? He said they ain't going to do no sin. Now he said that his remnant. Now look what he says. He will pardon them him whom he reserved. I want you to look at it. I'm going to pull the word out for you, Paul. And, and we're going to sit back and see what it means. Sit back, see what it means. The word for reserve is sha'ar. It means to remain, to be left over, a remainder, and a remnant. It's Sean, Aleph, and Rosh. And all it is is you're paired to the strength of the highest. Well, let's look at something when it comes to that. To order to be his remnant, you have to be paired to the strength of the highest. Well, who is the strength of the highest? Well, the firstborn is the strength of the father. That would be Yahusha HaMashiach. You got to be paired to him. We already kind of read that in John 17, but let's take a trip to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. When he said, you know, you know, in Hebrews chapter 2 by verse 11, you know, say he that sanctifies and he that sanctifies all in one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. See, when you're joined to the strength of the highest, meaning you're joined to Yahusha, then you would be the remnant. See, he said, you know, he gave them power. To become the sons of Elohim, and you not you don't become a solid son of Elohim by power of yourself, by will of man, by blood or by flesh, but by Elohim, outside of your control, man. 
So you got people who feel like I'm a son of Elohim. You can't you you can't create that narrative on your own, sir. It's got to come through Yahoo shop. That's it. Period. Point blank. Don't care who don't like it. Don't care who don't want to hear it. It's facts, though. You know why? Because that's what my in heaven told me. He said his witness is in heaven and his record is on high. His son has came forth and confirmed the testimony. It's what it is. First Corinthians chapter six. About verse 14. We'll make it 12. They say all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Meats for the belly, belly for the meats. For Elohim shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. Elohim both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. So if Elohim is raised up, Yahusha, you have to be joined to Yahusha to be raised up for him. Now he say he's parting those whom he reserved which is he's parting a remnant whom he reserved. See, Yahoo Shop made a statement. He said, I know those that believe not. We were like, I'm going to do that differently. Hold on. He said, no, you're not that your bodies are the members of a Mashiach. Shall I then take the members of a Mashiach and make them the members of a harlot? Allahim forbid. What? No, you're not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body. For two say if he shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one Ruach. So when you're of that remnant, you're joined. See, come to Ephesians 4 real quick. See, everybody want to be, you can't be unified and be in Yasharal. It's the wrong avenue to take. God and Elohim and Mashiach. That's the only unity that matters. If it's not unity in Elohim, it is not unity that's from heaven. Period. That's unity that is of men. And if it's of man, it will eventually crumble. And that's no disrespect to anybody. That's just the facts of what Yah has laid out. That's his wisdom and his understanding. See, we have to sit back and be willing to take on Yah's wisdom. Ephesians 4 and 1 and Yah's understanding and not our own. Yah's wisdom and understanding is everlasting. And that's just what it is. You got to see that. You got to understand that. Ephesians 4 and 1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, enduring, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Ruach and the bond of Shalom. And remember what we read before. Yahuwah, your Allahim is one. So the, the Akkad or the unity that we must strive one from another must be rooted in him. Not you being an Israelite, but in Elohim, period, point blank. That's all that matters. This is what he said, right? There's one body and one Ruach, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. So there's only one calling. You're not called to be an Israelite. That's not what he called you to. What was that body for? What was that Ruach for if he said it's only one? What is the calling? He said one Lord, one faith, one immersion. One Elohim and Abba of all who is above all and through all and in you all. So when you know back, what is that calling? You're called to everlasting life. How are you called to everlasting life? By the gospel of Yahusha HaMashiach. So he's your one master. Where's your one faith? Which is your one immersion because you're immersed in his death and raised in the likeness of his resurrection, which means you're raised in the Ruach, which means you're a part of the remnant, which means that is the that, that's being paired to the strength of the highest which is being paired to the resurrection of his son, which would make you a God because your Yahuwah, your Elohim is one, which would be one body, which goes back to what we read on Wednesday, how all the people gathered together at the water gate as one man, because all he sees is Yahusha. And when you look at your brother, you're supposed to see parts of Yahusha, not just that individual, but Yahusha's forearm, Yahusha's ankle, Yahusha's shin, Yahusha's abs, Yahusha's neck, his ears, his eyes, that's what you're supposed to see. That's the understanding of what he's trying to impart, that you see your God when you look at each other. That's why he say, if you love one another, then the whole world will know you're, you're, you're my disciples, because what man don't love himself? That's why he say, no man ever did his wife in a sour fashion. He that hate his wife, hate himself. Stuff is not difficult to understand. It's very, very simple to understand. 
Come over here. To, I think I'm in the same spot. Look at what he said in verse verse uh, 11. Because again, the same chapter of this epistle to Ephesians, he begins to refer to Yahusha's death and resurrection and ascension into Shahim and his dispensing of the Ruach HaKadosh. He said he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Amashiach, till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the son of Elohim unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Amashiach, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lay in wait to deceive. Notice that he said that these men are sunk to teach the word that we come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the son of Elohim that, that we could become a perfect man. If that's not the unity that people are talking about, then that's not a unity that comes from heaven. Because he said in the unity of the faith, the faith is not that we Israel. That is not the faith. That is not the faith. That's an asinine concept to even impart to another human being that ought to be rejected upon delivery. You should return that to sender upon receipt. Because that is not giving you the knowledge of the son of Elohim, nor causing you to become a, a perfect man in the fullness of the stature of Hamashiach. Nevertheless, some people may not like that. I genuinely don't care. Why the letter to quality control? Jeremiah chapter 50. It was something else in my, that I had in mind in the Gospels, man, and pertaining to that. And it just escapes me. It's been... Jeremiah chapter 50. What you know? That's why he said, you know, I, and you know, that's why he told you, you know, you got to be in the vine. Because without him, you can do nothing. You want to be that rim. That's why you had to be made. That's why you got, got to be paired in the likeness of his resurrection. Meaning and his death by means of immersion. Nevertheless, Jeremiah 15 and 21. He said, go up against the land of Marathian, which means double rebellion. That's another name for Babylon. When you see this name Marathian, that means double rebellion. Doubly rebellious. There's another name for Babylon. Even against it. Against the inhabitants of Pekod. Waste and utterly destroy it after them, saith Yahuwah, and do according to all that I have commanded you. A sound of battle is in the land and of great destruction. How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? How is Babylon become a desolation among the nations? I have laid a snare for you, and you're also taken, O Babylon, and you were not aware. You are found and also caught because you have striven against Yahuwah. Remember what he told you, I come a thief in the night when you ain't ready. See, Babylon wasn't ready. Babylon wasn't ready because of her pride. That's mentioned in, in, in Isaiah 47. Ain't nobody going to do nothing to me. Usually that's what happens with sinners. They get caught in their pride because you, you bounce like, like I be seeing people, man, people on all type of stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? Five years ago, I would have never seen nobody talking about we in Mercury retrograde and all this other stuff that niggas on because you who have never been enough for these people. They hate him. You know what I'm saying? And they hate him because he has a standard. He's a man of honor and accountability, righteousness and justice and goodness, mercy and truth. And people don't want to do with that. They, people like to be dangerous and destructive to themselves, but yet do it all in the name of Yahuwah. And he's going to let you too until it's time for him to come see you. Verse 25, Yahuwah have opened his army, armory and brought forth the weapons of his indignation. For this is the work of Yahuwah Elohim of hosts in the land of Chaldeans. Understand when he opened his armory, he has opened heaven. This is Revelation 19. The son Yahoo shot through. Let me open it up because it's time for me to come see you. Because remember, after Babylon is set on fire, this is when Yahoo shot make his appearance. According to the chronological uh, frame that you see in the book of Revelation. This is when we say slay all her bullocks. Let them go down to the slaughter. Woe unto them for the day has come. The time of their visitation. 
the voice of them that flee and escape out of the land of Babylon to declare in Zion the vengeance of Yahuwah Elohim and the vengeance of his temple. Let's go back to Revelation 11. He said, this is the day when people come about the land, they gonna be singing in Zion about Yahuwah is coming to bring vengeance. We had already read in Revelation 18 on Wednesday how he told everybody in heaven and all his apostles and prophets to rejoice over her. He said, he got to get vengeance. You done messed up my land and my house. See, people think you who is somebody to play with. 11 and 13. See, people really think you who is somebody to play with. He nobody play. After we read Revelation 11, we go to Revelation 16. In the same hour, was there a great earthquake and the 10th part of the city fell. And an earthquake was slain of men 7,000 and the remnant were affrighted and gave esteem to the Alahim and Shamahim. Ain't that sad and death to get you to get right, but he going to get you right. This is the, the second woe is past. Behold, the third woe come quickly. The seven Malachim sounded. There were great voices in Shamahim saying the kingdom of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord, uh, of Yahuwah and of his anointed one. He shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders which sat before Elohim on their seats fell upon their faces and worshiped Elohim, saying, we give thanks unto Yahuwah Elohim Almighty, which art, which was and are to come. See, which art, was and are to come. Same concept that we looked at last week. Because you have taken to you great power and has reigned. And the nations were angry and your wrath has come and the time of the dead that they should be judged. And you should give reward unto your servants, prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear your name, small and great. And you should destroy them that destroy the earth. And the temple of Elohim was opened in Shamahim, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, and there were lightnings, voices, thunderings, earthquakes, and great hail. Notice that he had to show the ark of his testament because they had already transgressed the everlasting covenant. Now he's coming to take reign and take hold. That's what you see after Babylon is destroyed, that Yahuwah will come to take hold of his earth and rule it and judge it. As they tell you in Psalms 99, Revelation 16. Let's continue. Now, when you look at Revelation 16, it's a lot of. Uh, this is when the uh, the vows come out, you know, what I mean, I want to read verse one of the vows and what that's going to go in Revelation 16 and one. And then we'll move along a little bit because it's got a little son to talk about that stinking whore named Babylon. That's what we came over here for. But Revelation 16 and one. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven Malachim, go your ways and pour out the vows of the wrath of Elohim upon the earth. At this particular juncture, you must understand that the beast is in power and he's ruling. At this time, Elohim decides that I'm going to begin to torment these evil people. Look at what he said what happened to him. The first vow went and poured out his vow. The first one, excuse me, and poured out his vow upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them that worship his image. This sword would be akin to the sword that was on Job in the book of Job. If you're not familiar, let's take a look. Let's just take a look if you're not familiar. Let's familiarize yourself with a little bit of information so you could get a little visual, a little understanding, if you will, of what we're discussing. Job chapter 2, verse 1. And there was a day when the sons of Elohim came to present themselves before Yahuwah and Hashatan came also among them to present himself before Yahuwah. Yahuwah said unto Hashatan, from when come you? From whence come you? Hashatan answered Yahuwah and said, from going to and fro on the earth, from walking up and down in it. Yahuwah said unto Hashatan, have you considered my servant Job? There's none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one to fear Elohim and eschew evil, and still hold fast his integrity. Although you move me against him to destroy him without cause. Let me uh let me uh pull this word up for integrity real quick. Like pardon me for a moment. You know it's a lot of things you sit back and look in the book, man, and you'd be like, wow, how did I overlook that? But then we give thanks to Yahuwah because, you know, his mercy endures forever. And 
He lets us catch it. The word for integrity here is tuma, simple integrity, tau, mean, hey, you know. You know, you can behold uh, the covenant of water, the covenant of life. Those who have integrity have that. And the word, by definition, is simply integrity. Verse four. Hashatan answered you who and said skin for skin. Yea, all that I have, all that a man have will he give for his life. See, that's one of the things that why Satan tried Yahusha with what he tried him with when he would be tempted. And this is how the adversary looks at most men, that you'll give anything to save your own life. See, Yahusha didn't have a desire to save his life. This is why Yahusha tell you he that loses life for my sake will gain it. And he that save his life shall lose it because this is the teaching of Satan. This is how Satan believes. Skin for skin, all that a man have, he'll give for his life. And you have to realize, son, Yahushua said, greater than love have no man than this, that a man lay his life down for his friends. You got to be willing to lay your life down for yours. And I forgot, son, in John 13. Let me grab that now. Praise you, Lord. It still worked. It was something that we mentioned earlier. Probably won't hit as strong as the point of what it would have been then. But nevertheless, we're going to get it. And what we was looking at, in, uh, we're talking about in regards to his remnant, that those that he knows, those that are his. And how we could sit back and see that, as you've seen that with Job. He said, you considered my servant, Job. Ain't nobody like it because he knew that Job was his. He knew Job wasn't no foe. He know his remnant. He knows of those that are paired to the strength of the highest. He knows. He knows those that are Sha'ar because he pardons those to whom he reserves. We take you back to the uh, dealing with Psalms 139 many, 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 many moons ago. And what's also in Ephesians chapter one about that. He already knows those who he has ordained unto salvation, who have a love for the truth. John 13 and one. Now, the, now before the feast of Passover, when Yahushua knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world under Abba, having loved his own, which were in the world. He loved them unto the end. He said he loved his own. He said, yours are mine and mine are yours. He said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them. He pardons those whom he reserved. He know who his women it is. Play with it if you want. You know what I'm saying? All this stuff people be on, that stuff don't mean nothing to me, man. I am thoroughly un unimpressed. You impress me. All you got to do is manifest the text, man. You got to remember, man, the book said Yahushua sought out no reputation, man. He didn't seek to be known. Known for what? Niggas be on some other type of time. You know what I'm saying? And this ain't no new conversation, man. I've been saying this for years. So don't think that I just seen something today or this week. I've been feeling like this for six, seven years. Dudes be on some other type of time. Do you know what I'm saying? And when you see that people on some other type of time, it's because they genuinely don't care about us and our, our soul salvation. That's not their concern. Their concern is whatever agenda that they're pushing. Do you know what I'm saying? And the agendas have changed from year to year. So my time period of being in the game, it changed from year to year of what people on. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is, man. Very few people are very consistent on what they own. Some people are consistently on folly. You know what I'm saying? We got to be consistently on Kadash faith, period. It's the only thing we need to be. Nevertheless, verse four again. Hashatan answered you who and said skin for skin, yea, all that a man have, he will give for his life. But put forth your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh and he will curse you to your face. You who said unto Hashatan, behold, he's in your hand, but save his life. So when Hashatan, so went Hashatan forth from the presence of Yahuwah and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto the to, unto his crown. And he took him a pot shirt to scrape himself with all, and he sat down among the ashes. And then said if unto him, Do you still retain your integrity? Curse Allahim and die. But he said unto her, You speak as one of the foolish women speak. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of Elohim? Shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. So you see, Job got some boils. So when we come back to Revelation and we look at these men getting hit off with these boils, now you can sit and see why that what you get for taking that dog doggone mark. Get them boils, nigga. Get you a pot shirt and scrape, you stupid bastard. 
That's what you deserve. Get no sympathy for me. You know what I'm talking about? Ain't got no sympathy for nobody who that falls to. And neither should any of you. They hate your God. What you got sympathy for them for? That's messed up. They got morals for taking them off. That's what you get, nigga. And I'm going to mock you for it. Because you deserve to be mocked. Y'all don't even see that. That's right. You shouldn't do that. Get your weak behind up out of here, man. Nigga, hate your God. Done took a whole other teaching and covenant from a false deity. And you want to be nice to him. To just like Elijah is. Maybe your God's sleeping. Maybe he don't hear you. I'm clowning. You deserve to be clowning. You big dunny. Do you know what I'm saying? Should have stood firm. Don't think that's just the nation's going to take that mark and follow this man. It's a whole heap of Israelites going to do it too. And try to convince you to do it. And tell on you and get you killed because you won't. Now play with it. Let me just show you that since I said, because y'all think I'm just talking, but the Lord done told you. Don't believe me. Believe the Lord. Luke 21. Don't believe me. Believe the Lord. Don't believe me. Because I ain't nobody to believe. But you're going to believe the Lord, though. That's who you're going to believe. Whether you want to believe it or not, that's who you're going to believe. 21 and 10. That's for certain. You ain't got to believe me. You're going to believe the Lord. You're going to believe you, Elohim, by Hashem, Yahweh, and You're going to believe them. You ain't got to believe me because it's his word. So I ain't nobody to be believed. Then said he unto them, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines and pestilence and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from Shamahim. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and to prisons being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. You ain't getting brought here. Ain't nobody persecuting you, putting hands on you, and delivering you to synagogues and prisons and taking you before kings and rulers because you an Israelite. That man said they're going to do that for his name's sake. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. So now you're going to bear witness against them. Settle that, settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what you shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And you shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren, kinfolk, and friends. Now remember, this is an Israelite speaking to Israelites, not talking about no nations. Your man ain't gonna tell on you, your brother's gonna tell on you, your, your kinfolk gonna tell on you. Do you not recall what it said in Psalms 55 that we walked together in sweet company in the house of Elohim and he betrayed me? Don't be no fool. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Get your mind right. You know who they're going to hate you for. And that's why you that's why you proclaim the name of Yahuwah and Yahusha with pride with strength, with faith, and with an honorable lifestyle to match that proclamation. Nevertheless, back to the revolution of China 16, man. You know, he's going to start talking about how, you know, he turn the water into blood, scorch men. I'm going to read verse 7. Let's get to Revelation 16 and 7. Look how evil people are. Look how much they hate you. Look at the pride. I heard another out of out of the office say, even so, Yahuwah, Elohim, Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. And the fourth Malachim poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. That's what some do. See, that's why the white folks, they be getting skin cancer. They do teach stupid stuff like that. And the men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of Elohim, which had power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him esteem. They getting scorched with the fire from the sun, and they still blasphemed and still wouldn't turn from their sins, still wouldn't honor him. You know how evil you got to be for that? That's the pride of Babylon right there. That's the main, that's the main thing of a whore. He tell you that in Jeremiah chapter 3, you have a whore's forehead. You refuse to be ashamed. Whores are full of pride. They can never be humbled because they don't see anything wrong with their behavior. And one of the book of Proverbs, it said, adulterous woman wipe her mouth and say, I've done no evil. It's pride, wicked hoe. She ain't worth nothing. She ain't worth the vagina she sit on. You know what I'm saying? She ain't worth nothing. Because a woman's womb is very vital because a woman's womb produces the fruit of, fruit of the earth, if you would. Because the man produces the seed. And then that seed pollinates in her womb or with her egg, which produced the fruits of life. You know what I'm saying? 
So that's a beautiful thing. But when she has the mind of a whore, she has the mind of a fool. The woman is the most disgusting, vile thing that you would ever see on this earth. You know what I'm saying? And that's according to King Solomon, not according to me, because he said, I find more bitter than death the woman. When a woman does not have the mind of the living Elohim in her and his word in her heart, that's one of the most vilest, disgusting creatures you would ever want to encounter because her mindset will disgust you. That woman has the mind of Elohim and the word in her heart. That is the most beautiful thing that you will ever encounter. Your heart will be able to rest safely with that woman and your ruach will rejoice because the book of Proverbs also tells you that a prudent wife come from Yahuwah. So a woman that precious and that beautiful is extended gift straight from your Elohim and she is supposed to be nurtured and cared for and honored accordingly. You know what I'm saying? Straight like that. Revelation chapter 16, man. I keep going. Just look at y'all and see how these people will not repent. And just recall now that these plagues are going on and will be going on in Babylon as well. It's just not something that's just boom, boom, boom. These plagues is hitting in Babylon as well. The fifth Malachim poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. That's why I just told you that. You see that? That's called a segue. You know what I'm saying? That's what they say on TV. And his kingdom was full of darkness and they gnawed their tongues for pain. And we've went over this before in a different fashion. The majority of these plagues are akin to the plagues that happened in Egypt. Notice that he said he poured his plagues on the seat of the beast, right on that throne to make the kingdom go dark. Why did the kingdom go dark? What did Yahusha tell you? John chapter 11. I'm going to make sure I got the right thing that I want. Then I do. John 11 and 9. That's another thing dudes like to argue about. When they start, all this type of stuff, people be arguing about. Ain't nobody soul saved, though. But you got all these answers about things and no consequences. Yahoo shall answer other not 12 hours in a day. If any man walk in the day, he stumble not because he see the light of the world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumble because there's no light in him. Come on back to Revelation 16. See, that's why Yahweh, that's why Allah ain't got to make it go dark so you can know that there's no light in him. He says, you know what I'm saying? That uh, uh, to the law and the prophets, if they speak not according to this word, it's because there is no light in them. The beast is not speaking according to the word. Therefore, there is no light in him. When you know the text and you see that he makes that kingdom go dark, then you know it's because he is not. Yet yeah, is. You understand? Ain't no light in him. Revelation chapter 16, man. Verse 10 again. And the fifth Malachim poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the Elohim of Shamahim because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. And the sixth Malachim poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water there was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. So he's setting the way for these somebody to come through. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the serpent and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet, the ruachs of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and to the whole world to gather them to the battle, that great day of Allah El Shaddai. We just read that in Jeremiah 50. That they was going to gather up. Ain't nothing new under the sun. He done already told you. You know these things so your heart can be comforted and be stilled. Remember, there's no peace for the wicked. We have no need to be fearful of any of these things because these things don't concern us in regards to his wrath. We know we haven't been appointed unto wrath, but unto life by way of Yahusha HaMashiach. Look at verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Baruch is he that watch and keep his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. They gather them together in a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. The seventh Malachim poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of Shamahim from the throne, saying, It is done. There were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. The great city was divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fell and great Babylon came in remembrance before Elohim.
to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Every island fled away and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed Elohim because of the plague of the hail, for the plague was exceeding great. Notice that he mentioned that he gave that cup. You who are willing, I'll talk about that cup more in detail on tomorrow. Because remember, he said Babylon was a golden cup in Elohim's hand. He said at this particular junction, when these vials come out, he said it's time for, for him to give her a cup so she can get what she needs to get. So you have to understand that, that when you see 17 and 18 chapter of Revelation, this is you who are getting ready to finish the deed. Not you coming out of Babylon now. This is the culmination of the mystery of Elohim and the and the and the, re, the revealing of his righteous judgments, not only upon Babylon, but upon all the way. But upon all the way that his servants may receive their reward. Like we read in Revelation 11, that his servants may receive their reward and the kingdom that he has prepared for them because he will pardon those whom he reserved. Nevertheless, that is Jeremiah 50. God got time. Verse 26. I already read verse 26. Give me verse 29. All together the archers against Babylon, all you that bend the bow, camp against it, round about it, let none therefore escape, recompense her according to her work, according to all that she have done, do unto her. She's been proud against Yahuwah and against the Kadash, one of Yasharal. So now we know where her pride against Yahuwah came from is because the beast had been doing all that blasphemy. Which, uh, which exalted Babylon in that particular fashion. Therefore shall her young men fall in the streets and all of her men of war shall be cut off in that day, say of Yahuwah. Behold, I'm against you, O most proud, say of Yahuwah, Elohim of hosts. For the day has come, the time that I will visit you. As we see in Revelation 16, the time is coming that he getting ready to visit. And the most proud shall stumble and fall and none shall raise him up. And I will kindle a fire in the cities and it shall devour round about him. They'll say of Yahuwah of hosts, the children of Yasharal and children of Yehuda were oppressed together. All that took them captives, held them fast, and refused to let them go. Their redeemer is strong. This is his name. He shall thoroughly plead their cause that he may give rest. I'm sorry, because I'm thinking about something. And disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. A sword is upon the Chaldeans, say of Yahuwah, and upon the inhabitants of Babylon, and upon her princes, and upon her wise men. A sword is upon the liars. They shall dwelt, they shall do. A sword is upon her mighty men. They shall be dismayed. A sword is upon their horses, and upon their chariots, and upon all their mingled people that are in the midst of her. And they shall become as a woman. As women, I should say. And a sword is upon her treasures, and they shall be robbed. Let's look at that sword. He said, it will come like women. You know what women do? The book say women are skillful in lamentation. Mm -mm. You were mad. And if I was you, I'd be mad too. Somebody been walking around disrespecting you for the last three and a half years as if you some type of sucker. As if you some type of punk. As if you somebody to be played with and disrespected. So he had to show him. I said, I don't know who you thought I was. I'm a gangster. Revelation 19 and 11. And I meant it just like how I just said that. You had to let him know. I'm a gangster. He told you he a man of war. You let him know. I am a gangster. I don't know what you thought I was or who you thought I was, but I'm a gangster. And I'll show you better than I can tell you. And I saw Shamahim open and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he do judge and make war. His eyes were a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself and he was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of Elohim and the armies which were, which were in Shamahim followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Out of his mouth go a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he tread the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Al Shaddai. 
And guess what he said, right? And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. He said, go ahead and play with it. You know what I mean? Go ahead and play with it. Come on back, man. It was son. I guess it's in chapter 51, man. It got to be in chapter 51. I got something ready for y'all out of 51, man. It got to be 51. Got to be. It is. It is. I got I got some I got a nice pack for you, man. And Jeremiah 51. Most high willing, we do it tomorrow. I thought it was in 50, but it's not. And when you look at them being robbed. They take you back to Psalm 68, where he said they'll bring you all their stuff, you know, their riches out of their out of their temple to bring to the temple of Elohim. But verse 38, a drought is upon her waters; they shall be dried up. That's what you just read. The river Euphrates dried up. It's all the same word, man. And Yahuwah is great, and His mercy endures forever. For it is the land of graven images, and they are mad upon their idols. Therefore, the wild beasts of the desert and the wild beasts of the island shall dwell there, and the isle shall dwell therein, and it shall be no more inhabited forever, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. As Elohim overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighbor cities thereof, saith Yahuwah, shall no man abide there, neither shall any son of man dwell therein. That ain't happened yet. That hasn't happened yet. You would know if he had overthrew a place like Sodom and Gomorrah. Let that be known. Nevertheless, that's why we went and read back about Sodom and Gomorrah. Behold, the people shall come from the north, a great nation, and many kings shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. You done read, we read about that in Revelation 17, last week. They shall hold the bow and the lands. They are cruel and will not show mercy. The voice shall roar like the sea. They shall ride upon horses. Everyone put in array like a man to battle against you, O daughter of Babylon. The king of Babylon have heard the report of them, and his hands waxed feeble. Anguish took hold of him, and pangs as a woman in travail. He started feeling like a woman giving childbirth. Behold, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of Jordan to the habitation of the strong, but I will make them suddenly run away from her. Who is a chosen man that I may appoint over her? Listen to what he's saying now. Who is a chosen man that I may appoint over her? For who is like me? Who will appoint me the time? Who is the shepherd that will stand before me? I feel like that's self-explanatory. Is that self-explanatory? That's self-explanatory who we talking about going to come over there and finish this whole off. But if you're not sure who this is, who is a chosen man? He said, this is my beloved son of whom I'm well pleased. He said, who is he? Who is like me? Well, Yahushua thought in that robber that may be made equal with Elohim. Because I and my Abba are one. That's what he said. So he's like him. He said, if you seen my, you seen me, you seen my father also. Would that not be that's the person who's like him? Well, who will he who will appoint me the time? Well, Yahushua told you, no man know the time or the hour, but my Abba, which is in heaven. Who is that shepherd that will stand before me? He said, I'm the good shepherd and the shepherd of the sheep. And the sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Because guess what? They, what did the people stand up and say about who is like unto the beast? Who will make war? Ain't nobody like this nigga but his daddy the devil. And you just like him. An evil, ignorant, deleterious bastard. A bastard of ill repute. Nevertheless, verse 45. Listen to what he tells you. Therefore, Hear you the counsel of Yahuwah that he taken against Babylon. Now you done heard his recommended course of action and his purposes and what he going to do to it. That he have purpose against the land of the Chaldeans to the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate with them. And at the noise of the taking of Babylon, the earth is moved and the cry is heard among the nations. And you just seen how the earth was moved with that earthquake in Revelation 16. And I didn't read about the earthquake in, in Isaiah 24 because he definitely said the earth would be shaken to and fro like a drunkard. But let's see something with that word purposes. And we've completed Jeremiah chapter 50 and that will complete our time for this evening.
Oh yeah, we remember that word. That's the thoughts, the devices, and the plans. So we're not gonna go. That's the word we dealt with before. When we dealt with uh, the thoughts of evil or sin, your intents, your devices, your purposes, your plans. So as you can see, a majority of what we had read in Jeremiah 50 out of the 46 verses, we had already touched either Wednesday or earlier before we even got to it. And all this is this is the punishment and the, the wrath that Yahuwah will set forth upon a land and a kingdom, which has decided that they would disrespect him in a very egregious fashion. So hallelujah for Yahoo shot in the word. Appreciate everybody's time. Bless all y'all at the house. Y'all name Yahoo Shah. You know, stay strong and stand firm. You who are willing, we will continue. And we will take a trip down the 51st chapter. And he will continue his uh his assailing upon uh, Babylon. And it also makes mention of some redemption and, and a few other things that we will well, we will delve into. But to, for you to understand that the beef is Babylon has with Yahuwah, you have no need to fear, no need to be nervous. All of these things are to make you aware of what is to come, period. Do you know what I'm saying? When you have an understanding of what is to come, you can stay very, very firm in your faith and those things won't shake you. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to shake you. And, and, and it's, it's really not that serious. And of course, you see, you know, we got elements of gospel slid in there, you know, good certain things. But also that you can see how evil people are, that even when there's an opportunity for repentance, men still don't want it. So weigh and consider that, you know, let your faith be made strong, man. Make sure that you come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of son Elohim, become a perfect man in that fullness of stature. Continue to stand firmly upon the, the rock of everlasting salvation. Don't let your heart be troubled by any manner of trouble that you might see in the earth. But let your heart and mind be steadfast and fixed on Mashiach who sit at the right hand of Elohim in heaven. And make sure that your election is sure that you might receive the fullness of your calling. So again, you know, blessings out the house of Elohim in the name of Yahushua, man. You know, stand firm, stand strong, y'all willing. We'll pick it up again on tomorrow. We'll be on 103rd. Do it all over again. With that being said, good day to you today.